Joining us back in studio, welcome again to Frank DeLuca from Chain Employment Services. How are you, sir? I'm very good, Tom. Excellent, excellent. Now, I got an interesting, we're going to talk to some of our job seekers in just a second. Uh, first, let me mention, uh, she's in studio right now. We'll talk to her in a second. Anna Marie Dominic, how are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm excellent, thank good. you. There's an interesting situation, and I want to ask you, because we often don't think of it in terms of... Uh, um, the news that workers at General Motors getting recalled. Okay, that's great. 270 plus workers getting recalled. Super. All right. Good for them. Don't have to make the drive to Oshawa anymore. But isn't there also, because if it doesn't affect you, you think, well, I wasn't working at GM. Oh, big deal. So what? Isn't there also a, a, a domino effect that 270 people, if they are working, have to leave their jobs? And so we now may see, and it may not all of those jobs will get filled. But wouldn't we be seeing not just necessarily if guys were working elsewhere, that there's a possibility that um, that we could have positions open for the jobs they left? Absolutely. Um, think about the fact is that the 270 people have to be replaced at the GM Oshawa and uh, Woodstock and Ingersoll locations. That's okay. 270 there. Then it's the 270 people that have to be replaced that are working elsewhere in the Niagara region. Um, so they're basically, uh, uh, so the domino effect would be, uh, I think, for every direct job at General Motors, it's six more jobs that are added. Yeah. So it, I, I believe it's six to one. It could be seven okay. to one. So you're looking at the fact is that something else is is coming about. They're increasing their production. So therefore, the tool maker who uh, got laid off comes back to work. Uh, the person who is the restaurant that's near the General Motors facility uh, starts another shift. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different people that indirectly uh, get affected by a uh, an increase of any type uh, at General Motors. So it's a great, uh, great news for the, uh, and those are well-paying jobs. Those are extremely well-paying jobs. So therefore, it's great for the economy of uh, St. Catharines because they're coming back home. Now, on a seasonal note, um, and we, we talked about chain employment services, where uh, which you operate. Oftentimes, there's a lot of seasonal nature to some of the jobs uh, uh, that that you have available there. What are some of the seasonal positions that um, start to pick up in the spring? Obviously, now you talked last week about there was someone with bookkeeping or accounting experience we talked about and he said you know it's unfortunate it's a little late in the tax season we know that starts up end of you know end of january beginning of february and really that you know we see a bump in that what's what's sort of a short term or temporary or what are the positions that in spring we really start to see pick up for hiring Okay, well, there's Mother's Day coming up, so okay. the greenhouse industry is going to be picking up. And that's, is that that's not the where, busiest day for that's flowers? That's the busiest day for flowers, okay. and for uh, uh, what industries are now starting to come about because of the spring, it's construction season, so therefore there's going to be a lot more construction, because winter construction, you can only do so much. So now the roofers, because now they can get back on the roofs, now it's not cold anymore, so there's going to be a, an increase in, in, in the number of uh, jobs available for the... Uh, the roofing industry. Okay. Joining us in studio, as we said, now we have one of our job uh, seekers on the line, and we'll get to Carol in just a second. But in studio with us from Niagara Falls, Anna Marie Dominic. Anna Marie, how are you? Oh, let me turn back up your mic. Uh, there we go. Now yeah. we're back on the air. <laughs> and uh, you have been um, laid off since when? Since December. Okay. And what, uh, I, I mean, we see here, have a degree in psychology from Brock and a uh, minor in business, and you were your own, you owned your own company for a while? Yes, I did. And what, what kind of company was that? It was a home improvement company. Okay. Yeah. And then what, what kind of job are you looking for? Um, Probably um, an office job more than anything. Um, I've been out of school for a while, and um, my forte really is in the office. It's business. Okay. So just from a, a quick glance, Frank, when we look at someone like uh, Anna Marie, who, uh, you know, when you look at her resume, high achiever, had her own company for a long time, uh, you know, has a degree, unlike the people we saw last week. Um, where I don't believe any of them had a degree here. Here she has a degree uh, from Brock and a minor in business. When you look at the strengths and the weaknesses of a resume and, and where you go from here, what stands out to you? Well, actually, she's probably been um, overqualified for some of the work that she's doing now. And okay. uh, so uh, what's, what, uh, what really 
um, that's almost out. like a backhanded compliment, isn't it? Yeah, it is, you're yes. overqualified. Let's do that. Well, yeah. I need a job. You yes. know, <laughs> let me deal with the overqualifications. Have you, have you encountered a lot of that? Uh, some of that, yes. Okay, I have, and I and I tell them that's okay. I'll take it anyway. Fair enough. And she's got like a, a very strong PSW uh, experience. Uh, it's been quite a few years uh, since, but uh, that is a market that is uh, becoming uh, quite. Uh, uh, that's where a lot of people are ending up in their programs now. So there's a pretty competitive market there, and mm-hmm. and having a psychology degree is uh, and one of those things that uh, opens up a lot of options for you. Yes. One of the things that I see is, uh, you know, right away she talks about, you know, her objective, that a, a new position that will allow me to utilize my existing skills. And then her skills talks a lot about her office work and talks a lot about her uh, ability, I guess, sort of accounting, bookkeeping um, um, background. Are these, uh, I, I guess I would assume, highly transferable skills that are easily applied within any organization that, that, it's, that, that you don't need a long time to introduce. Anna Marie to to the office environment, it would be she she seems to be a worker uh, that could quickly adapt. Sure, she could hit the ground running in any office uh, atmosphere. the uh, The key is, I think, with a lot of jobs, is that this is the kind of experience you want first. Okay, and then you whatever else experience you have, this is just a bonus to whatever else you can bring to the table. Where have you been looking without you know naming company names but are you are do you want to stay in Niagara Falls are you willing to travel throughout the Niagara region or even further I'm willing to stay within the Niagara region okay. I do have two small boys at home uh not at home they're they're in school but uh 6 and 8 and my husband works on the boat so I consider myself a single mom a lot of the time Fair enough cuz he's away about oh. 9 months out of the year Wow okay yeah. So does that, um, obviously, you know, the, the position specific you'd have to be, but certainly, well, willing to stay. Do you have access to a car? Yes. Okay. All right. There is no restrictions there. So right. um, I'm just, uh, uh, the, I can't see anywhere where there's, uh, I would think a midnight shift would not be uh, something that you would be interested in. But A, a general that? 9 to 5, 8 yeah. to 4, 8 to 5, that's what you're typically looking for, which I imagine the majority of jobs still are. For the for the most part, okay. uh, in, in the temporary business, you do have midnight shift uh, jobs, and I can see with you know with the children, it's a difficulty with with childcare and mm-hmm. and that stuff. But I think it you you open up yourself wide open to a lot of opportunities. Where would she go? Have you gone to any employment agency or headhunting firm and offered your resume up? Um, I went to. Um it's a uh, employment center. Say, is it St. Catharines? I've sent my resume to them, and I've been online looking through everything. I've sent out a lot of resumes. Have you sent it out to companies that are looking, or have you sent it out to companies unprompted as well? Um, no, ones that are looking. Okay. Okay. Um. Actually, I. I. This is kind of a perfect opportunity for me to 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 let you know is that. Uh, Rick Bartolomeo was who was uh, here last week. Right. Uh, uh, I have compiled a list of uh, what uh, I would consider the uh, the agencies who are the, probably the most, um, uh, I guess, most aggressive when it comes to hiring in in your type of work and Rick's type of work. It was a, a managerial type office type work. So I'm uh, just compiling the list and I'll send it out and I'd be more than happy to provide it to six ten as well. Is it? Uh, it gives the list of the kind of uh, I would say the top ten. Um, uh, recruiting firms, their contact information, and these are firms that will actively are looking for people for a variety of jobs. I'll use an example of Ian Martin, Bartek, or our, our organizations that uh, specifically are targeting. Um, there are some executive jobs, but there's also anywhere from uh, uh, administrator all the way up to vice president of a company. Okay, and one of the w- one of the reasons why people should use that is, and I've always heard this, and I think we talked about it last week. Only about twenty percent of jobs get advertised. That most jobs are unadvertised and are filled either uh, uh, by a quiet search or using um, search firms, either like yourself or like you mentioned, that fill specialized niches and they'll say, we're not going to advertise this job, but you have someone in mind who could fill this position. Yeah, there are, there are two types of recruiters. There's one that recruits for employers, okay. there's one to recruit for employees. Okay. And the employee actually pays a fee 
and they will go and find a job for them. Um, would you ever? Would you recommend that, or is it no? Okay. Uh, in in this type of market, no, absolutely not. And 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 I and I'm really cutting my own throat on here because I, I you know I could be making money here. <laughs> but what I what I what I consider is that is that in the job market the way it is, and the the amount of money that is. Uh, uh, that the, the companies do charge. I always think it's more important to uh, to get your face out there, but also to use them as uh, a secondary source. And uh, there are, you know, there are lots of them. I mean, there's a considerable amount of them, but there's ones that are really um, uh, the ones that are more effective in the Niagara region area. So because because there's a lot of Toronto based ones, right? And they're the ones that's that, not going to be good for you. No, that's not going to be good for you. And job, was, you're not looking for a job in Brampton. No, you're I'm looking, not. You're looking for job. <laughs> now. Um, we got to go for a quick break, but leaving Anne Marie in terms of uh, looking at her resume, um, uh, any homework you'd give her in terms of uh, what's the next step she should do? Obviously, contact these companies in terms of putting her resume to them because they have such extensive contacts. But anything she should do to brush up her resume or to polish it up? Because, I mean, just looking at it, it's a pretty strong resume. Very strong resume. Uh, there is a lot of information here. Um, Should she pare that down? Should she simplify it a bit? Uh, you know what? That's a good. That's a good point. I would look at also um, um, because it is a very condensed resume. She's going to need to put some white space around, and what I mean is uh, empty, uh, empty lines, and try to emphasize some of the really great work she has here. Thank you, Frank DeLuca. Now, are you encouraged? I am. All right. I think this is a good first step. Yes. Because, and the problem is, I mean, you have not such high expectations, but you've got a very good resume. Thank so you. in terms of, it's not just finding, uh, hey, listen, we, we, we have a temporary job for you that you need to pay the bills. It's uh, You're looking for a career. Right. Yes. You're looking for the next step in your career, yes. which is always probably going to take a little longer, Frank, but it's probably going to, we don't want you to be in the next job. We want you to, we want to help build that career, I guess. It always takes a little longer when, it, when it's a job like that. So, uh, Anna Marie Dominic, thank you so much. Thank you. Are you going to stick around? Because yes. there's more tips that, uh, oh. that we can probably share. Sure. Thank you. 19 minutes after 10 o'clock when we come back, our next job hunter, Carol from uh, Niagara Falls again, and this is 610 CKTB. News of the day. Whatever hateful agenda drove these men to such heinous acts will not, cannot prevail. All day. Our helicopter had actually detected the subject in the boat. It picked up the heat signature of the individual, even though he was underneath what appeared to be the shrink wrap or a cover on the boat itself. Every day. How could this do this? For what? For the sake of what? What believes? What prompted them to this? News Talk 610 CKTV. If you have a fireplace chimney or gas fireplace, you know the importance of keeping it well maintained. And the friendly people at Stamford Hardware and Fireplace are the professionals to do the job. Now's a great time to have your chimney swept or your gas fireplace cleaned. Call on Stamford's professionals so you'll have peace of mind that it's done right. Call 905-356-2922. Stamford Hardware and Fireplace, Town and Country Plaza on Portage Road, Niagara Falls. I refuse to pay full price for anything. Hey, mister, I'm mowing lawns for extra money. I'll do yours for 20 bucks. Hmm, how about 10? Deal. Who doesn't love a deal? Every Wednesday at 10 a.m., I log on to NewstalkDeals.com because I get a ton of online deals at half price. Save 50% at the Frying Guys, the Shaw Festival, Pilates Emporium, and Dom's Downtown. NewstalkDeals.com. Save 50% Wednesday at 10 a.m. It's the show where you get to chirp about the Jays, rattle about the Sabres, and bark about the Ice Dogs. Game on with Rod Mulhood. Weeknights from 6 to 7, only on Niagara's News Talk 610 CKTV. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Mainly sunny today. High of 14 degrees. A few clouds tonight. Low down to 4. Mainly sunny on Tuesday. High of 15. Rain on Wednesday. High of 8. Right now in downtown St. Catharines. Under partly sunny skies, it's now 9 degrees. A lot of people like to ask, hey, what's in it for me? Well, the answer is everything. When you buy a 2013 Dodge Journey Canada Value Package, starting from 19995 and when you step up to the Ultimate Journey Package, there's even more. With no-cost options like rear backup camera and you connect hands-free. 
for total discounts of up to $5,625. See your Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and Ram retailer for details. It was a Sunday or a Monday when they appeared out of the fog. Yar! Buy one fish dinner and get the second half price at Lakeport Fish and Chips. BOGO! At Lakeport Fish and Chips every Sunday and Monday. Buy one dinner, get the second for half price. Enjoy BOGO on cod, haddock, and pollock. Get hooked on their English style fish and chips. Lakeport Fish and Chips. Three great locations, one great taste. Lakeport and Linwell St. Catharines. Lundy's Lane and Kalar Niagara Falls. And now open at Highway 8 and do it in Stony Creek. LakeportFishandChips.com. It's spring. Time to win at Best Way Bedding. Make any purchase this month, including latex pillows, single, double, queen, or king beds, headboards, and adjustable beds, and you could win your purchase. Any purchase. Any item in April. You'll be entered in a draw to win what you buy. Stop in for great savings and your chance to win your purchase in April. Best Way Bedding. 50 Scott Street West in St. Catharines. Shop online at bestwaybetting.com. For me, it's the best place, and I feel really safe here. There's nothing more magical than the voice of a child. And on Thursday, May 2nd, we invite you to join us for 610 CKTV's Have a Heart Niagara Kids Radiothon. With your support, we can raise much-needed funds for the Niagara Children's Center, money that goes towards making life better for families in our community. 610 CKTV proudly supports the Niagara Children's Center. Text SPECIAL at 45678 for a $10 donation now. Details at 610CKTV.com. You're listening to Tom McConnell on News Talk 610 CKTV and online at 610CKTV.com. Call Tom McConnell now at 905-688-CKTV, 1-877-610-CKTV, or pound 610 on the Bell Mobility Network. Ten twenty three is our time. This is News Talk six ten CKTB. Frank DeLuca from Chain Employment Services is with us in studio, along with uh, our first job seeker Anna Marie Dominic and our second job seeker, also from Niagara Falls, Carol Vaticino. Carol, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I am excellent. I was pretty close in your name, Vaticino. That that was perfect. All right. <laughs> Um, how long have you been looking for? Uh, you have a, a slightly different but similar situation to Anna Marie, but a uh, lo- lot of office experience, a right. lot of business experience. How long have you been looking for a position? Well, I've only actually been unemployed for about a month. Uh, I worked at Zeller's, which obviously closed, and uh, I do have another part-time job, but it is very part-time. It's only about four hours a week. So I'm not actually unemployed. I'm just underemployed. Severely underemployed yeah. at four hours a week. Yeah. I know there's a book, The Four Hour Work Week, but that, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, I think that's taken it to the extreme. Yeah. So what kind of position are you looking for? Again, a bookkeeping job, accounts payable, something in an office. That's where my background is. Frank, when you look at this, uh, when you look at her resume, uh, you know, and she wants to get back into the into the workforce, um, and she wants to get back in full time. Um, is it going to be the same as Anna Marie? It's going to take probably a little more time to find that 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 right position, or or are these jobs plentiful. The um, the most I actually looking at both resumes as I see them right now is that uh, totally different resumes. They um, but in both cases, um, uh, one of the suggestions I made last week is that because uh, you've only uh, um, Carol's only been away for a month, uh, you know that's that's not a long time. That's an opportunity for her to kind of decide her goals, decide what she wants to do, and then move forward and. Um, Anna Maria's case, I mean, she's been uh, off a little longer. I would, I mean, in the suggestion would be is that uh, for Anna Maria is to to find something, uh, not necessarily in your field, but to to get out there and to get the experience because now she's got a gap of, let's say, four or five months now. So that's, uh, you know, the gap starts to get bigger. And I think off air we were talking about gaps in in resumes. And and one of the things that I had uh, made suggestions to people is that, um, uh, in in Carol's case, and I'm, I'm not going to pick on her because she's not. I don't see her face, so this is going to be an interesting thing. Is that I wouldn't put the month when it comes to um, your experience from uh, one from one month and year to month to year. Okay, I'd, I'd get away from the months because then what somebody's looking for is okay. There's a gap of six months 
or I'm not sure if there is one on here, but I did, I, I saw one uh, one little gap. But uh, the years are fine. I mean, when you go to an interview, one of the biggest suggestions I have for people is you bring your resume. You have the resume in front of you because guess what? They have the resume in front of them. They're going to ask you questions about your resume. I couldn't tell you 20 years ago what date I left TRW. I couldn't tell you. I just don't know, and I would have to go refer to. I'm getting older, and I forget lots of things, but I go back to my resume. If uh, somebody was out in an interview, I just check my resume and tell them the date. I, when I look at Carol's resume, and Carol, I don't mean to pick on you either, but in terms of the, the gap is six years. In terms of you left the job as a bookkeeper between and then starting at Zeller's, there's a six-year gap. So obviously... Uh, I think from the email you sent me, it was because well, you had a family and you raised your kids. That's right. Yeah, and so it's a, you know it's a natural, but um, that gap, uh, you know, I don't think any employer will have a problem with it. But is that the gap you you worry about that it's a six year gap? Uh, not that I worry about it, but I, I think that there are other um, opportunities within a resume to tell your story. And uh, the experience of, of raising your child has to be the most important experience in your life, but it doesn't have to be the uh, the concern that an employer should have. Obviously, employers shouldn't be concerned. That's a, probably one of the best things that somebody can do in their life is, is stay home and, and look after their children. However, but in a resume, in a faceless resume, when you're not talking to the individual, this is your only opportunity to show what you can do. So I would always be careful of putting information, too much information in a resume. And in and, and Carol's case, I mean, hers is very concise, but it also you also have to be careful of what information you're going to put on the resume. Because, again, if you're looking at... Uh, uh, a number of jobs. Uh, um, I can't count. Let's see one. There's six on here. One and goes back to 1989. Yeah. Does okay. she need that job that on there? A, that was the, about, just about to say that. Geez, you stole my thunder. <laughs> is the fact is that there's, uh, um, you know, 20 years ago, um, if the job that you had back then, if it's not that important to your resume, um, I would just leave it off. I I would look at. Um, the last 15 years will be good enough. You have to remember is that computers only came in 25 years ago. So anytime before that, it's not the experience of computers and bookkeeping probably wouldn't be that important to the actual job you're doing because bookkeeping is QuickBooks and all the other types of programs that are out there. Those you know take take place so, you know 25 years ago we didn't have those things and it would have been easier back then and she notes uh, she has a simple accounting course so that obviously means she's proficient in today's accounting method how you were in payroll or accounts payable back then probably not that important but good point is that when she put simply accounting course she just said that I always would say proficient. I would say okay. expert. I would say whatever. I, I like adjectives. And the only reason adjectives are great on a resume is that the fact is that, okay, so you took a course. Great. Did you get 30%? Did you get 40? Did you get 80? Did you get 100? And in fact, if I did get 100 and I aced the course, I'd let, let them know on my resume. Show them how smart I am. Frank DeLuca, Chain Employment Services. We'll talk a little bit more to Carol when we get back. I also had, uh, hey, I asked for it and I got I got it. Interesting, uh, uh, we have a job uh, that someone would like spotlighted for their company, so we'll share that as well. And then more, uh, this is our job fair on 610 CKTB. Spring, spring, spring. Not only is Rins happy that spring is here, but Rins Furniture in Beamsville is offering incredible prices on their spring mattresses. From pocket coil to continuous coil with comfort levels to suit everyone, Rins has the right Canadian-made mattress for you at seriously low prices. Queen mattresses starting at just $3.99. Rins Furniture, mattresses and hometown Sears store. 4548 Ontario Street, Beamsville and 3770 Montrose Road, Niagara Falls in the Mount Carmel Plaza. From the 610 CKTV News Center, Niagara, now. Good morning, it's 1030. I'm Tammy Jennerette. Here's what's making news. Massachusetts will observe a moment of silence to mark the passage of one week since two bombs went off at the Boston Marathon, killing three and wounding more than 180. There will be one minute of silence at 2.50 this afternoon, which is when the first explosion took place a week ago today. Then bells will ring across the state.
The House of Commons is set to debate legislation giving police more power in the event of a terror attack. Various versions of the Combating Terrorism Act have been kicked around Parliament for at least the last five years. The one currently under debate was introduced in the Senate in 2012. Among other things, it creates a new criminal offense that would apply to people leaving Canada for the purpose of committing certain terrorist acts abroad. And members of Port Dalhousie's Royal Canadian Legion branch have said yes to a deal to sell the Lakeport Road property to the same group developing the controversial Port Place Tower. Members voted in favor of selling the property to the Augustine Group, who wants to build a $10 million six-story seniors condo project on the site. The deal still needs the approval of the Legion's Ontario Command. Checking CKTB Time Saver traffic, the NRP reporting a problem-free drive around the region, a delay-free drive over Niagara Street border bridges, and over the Welland Canal, the Queenston and Clarence Street bridges are raised. The Allenburg Bridge will be closed for repairs until 8 tonight. Your forecast, sunny today, the high 14. Few clouds tonight, the low near 4. Sunny tomorrow, the high 15. Right now, 10 degrees. Call to the post, the future of South Niagara, a town hall broadcast on CKTB Wednesday, April 24th. For details, check out our website, 610cktv.com. I'm Tammy Jennerette. News next at 11 on News Talk 610 CKTV. Welcome to Roger's Tech Talk. Go, Allison. My sister says Roger's smart home monitoring is better than my traditional security system. What don't I know, Rog? Well, Allison, unlike traditional security systems that rely on phone lines, only Rogers Smart Home Monitoring offers the dual protection of both broadband internet and wireless networks, so your home is always connected. Without this, your home simply isn't as secure. Wow, I didn't know that. Well then, you should know that Rogers Smart Home Monitoring lets you use your smartphone or computer to know instantly when your kids walk in the front door safely. You can even arm and disarm your system and control the thermostat and lights. That's so cool. Cool. I kind of wish I didn't already have a security system. That's okay. You can upgrade your system easily and even keep your hardware. You know what, Raj? This knowing thing is awesome. Oh, I know. No upfront cost packages are now available in the Golden Horseshoe. Conditions apply. Call one triple eight rogers one for details. Rogers Smart Home Monitoring. Now you'll know. Now I know just how good it feels. I found a place that has the greatest deal. See how good it feels to get the best in every way from Brian Cullen Motors with the new Chevrolet and Cadillac vehicle lineup, plus all makes of used and GM certified pre-owned vehicles, along with GM good rent service, GM parts and accessories, and expert collision repair too. See Brian Cullen Motors today, famous for fairness, Ontario Street, St. Catharines. So come on in and see how good it feels. Can you hear it? Spring is in the air. Can you see it? Vibrant new ideas for your home. Where can you find them? Niagara on the Lake. If you've been dreaming about a fresh new decor or how your gardens will soon look, spring is already thriving in Niagara on the Lake. Enjoy shop after shop of new colors and styles. Spring is a time of renewal. So come and get inspired by refreshing ideas where blossoms are getting ready to bloom. Visit Niagara on the Lake today. Dealing with sadness, lack of energy, or stress? Brain Matters can help. Visit them at their new wellness center. Go to the advisor section under Lifestyle and Entertainment at 610CKTB.com. You're listening to Tom McConnell on News Talk 610 CKTB and online at 610CKTB.com. Call Tom McConnell now at 905-688-CKTB, 1-877-610-CKTB, or pound 610 on the Bell Mobility Network. 10.35 is our time. This is News Talk 610 CKTB. This is our job fair part two. We're going to do it again next week. So as I always say, if you would like to be considered, please send me a resume. McConnell at 610CKTB.com. And we'll try to get as many different resumes as possible. And if we don't get to you one week, we will definitely get to you the next week. We're going to do this as an ongoing thing. And then looking again at um, uh, Carol's back with us and looking at her resume. I mean, you had a couple of minor tips for her. But just like Anna Marie, should she start with, should she have a resume available to employment agencies because most jobs especially a lot of office jobs that don't need to be filled yesterday um uh it it won't be publicly advertised 
Yeah, there there are two markets out there. There's one that uh, people go and look for um, people. <coughs> I didn't give you the water today. <laughs> no, that's the problem. I'll get the water in a second. <coughs> Carol, let me ask you this: Have you told your circle of friends? Have you told uh, on social media? Have you told uh, people in your life that you're looking for a job? Um, the people in my life, yes, know that I am looking for a job. I'm not on social media, unfortunately. I'm one of those uh, dinosaurs. Okay, because that was one of the things Frank talked about last week. Let the people you, you talk to, let your circle of friends, let your family members, let, let, let people know that you are looking for a job because they also may know, uh, and, and they, there's no better recommendation than someone who knows you personally. Oh, Carol, oh, she'd be perfect for this position. That, that, that word-of-mouth advertising is not just good for restaurants and, and movies, but for job seekers as well. And then there's Facebook, uh, letting all your Facebook friends know um, that you're looking for work. There are um, other uh, professional sites. Uh, LinkedIn.com is a professional site, and they have a, uh, a job center in there. Um, they're always looking for people for uh, basic uh, supervisories on the way up to vice presidents of the company. And these are um, there's a free site. Uh, there are some uh, uh, sites that you you pay to go on, but uh, LinkedIn is a uh, basic LinkedIn dot com site is uh, free and uh, you're able to browse through and see what's out there and what's available in the, in the professional ranks there's um kijiji there's uh, a lot of sites uh, dedicated to the um the industry and uh, uh wowjobs.ca is one and uh jobbank.gc.ca is another one indeed i n d e e d dot c a and these are ones that uh, I'll be more than happy to send you and uh, to, to pre preview those sites. I just found out a new one today when I was doing my research. It's called jobmire.com. How do you spell that? J O B M I R E. Jobmire, okay. I don't know the premise, but I just went on it today and I saw that there was a bunch of jobs. Now, uh, we, have to have to, we also have to remember that there's a, a lot of duplication between the sites, but. Uh, each individual um, employment agency has their own uh, jobs within their site. So when we're talking about the market, which is a little bit different, is the job, the market that uh, some are not advertised, the manpowers of the world, chain employment services as well, has a list of jobs within their websites. So I'd be more than happy to send that uh, information to you uh, just to let you know all the various sites that uh, the jobs are out there. Now, we were talking about highlighting jobs that are out there i'm i know of one because i uh, went on the job bank this morning just to take a look and see what's out there and i saw one for la scala restaurante which is here in st Catharines, and they're looking for servers they're looking for a chef they're looking for basically people to run a restaurant right when what, what's the next step for carol what what does she do next other than you know d does she polish up her resume does she then and, and then and then just contact polish up her resume a, a bit because the the basics are there everything and i'm not saying it's a basic resume carol but uh, i mean you're 90 percent of the way there with your resume just polish it up a little um throw in a couple more adjectives and then go to uh, i guess as you mentioned the job resources that uh, uh the the other you know job search companies that would or as you you know jobmire.ca or what was the other one job bank that the government runs is that was that i mean basically where she goes yeah i, I think that a lot of times uh people will uh only do the uh sending the email i sending an email and sending a reference letter over um through email is probably not the best way to go about it i i would Target the industry that you uh, decide that you want to work in and tailor your resume to that group because uh, a problem that a lot of people have is they'll have a resume and it's probably uh, full of uh, accounting and office work and then they want to apply for a construction job. So I think that you got to tailor your resume to the field that you you want to uh, uh, go uh, go into and decide to uh, to apply to and then go face to face because I, I said last week uh, and I do truly agree with this is that people are less likely to say no to you to your face and uh, the interview your whole opportunity for your resume is only to get an interview and I can't remember your comment there I, I if you that the, the the resume gets to the interview it's the interview that gets you the job because you could have an outstanding resume and then when they meet you they're like 
No, I don't think so. This guy is not the right fit. Because body language. Body language tells us so much about the person. And as you said, your resume doesn't tell us everything. It's a it's a brief outline of your working career. And that's it. And then And then when you come in, then they see who this person really is. Then when they see Carol, when they see Anna Marie, and it's like, ah, now they're... They're fully formed humans. Let's let's get a better understanding of how they would fit into this organization. And then you get an opportunity to explain certain things in your resume that you know maybe aren't as uh, delicately uh, discussed in the resume. We talk about gaps in our resume in regards to childcare. Well, I mean, a gap could mean anything. If it's, if it's an empty space of six years and you don't explain it, I mean, there you could be incarcerated, you could be whatever. But if it's a childcare issue. You know, it doesn't say I've gone to child care. It just says six years you weren't working. So I'd look at the resume and say, okay, well, she wasn't working for six years. Where was she? Because your resume doesn't explain it to you, but face-to-face, I'm sure you're going to tell me that, you know, you spent the good six years taking care of your children, which the, is a wonderful thing. The best decision I ever made. I left the workforce to raise my kids. All right. Carol, uh, any questions you have for Frank? Well, that <clears throat> excuse me. That's what I was wondering. Is it appropriate in, like, I have been applying to jobs online. I, I send a cover letter with my resume. Uh, is it appropriate to mention in the cover letter that I, I took time off to be with my children? I'm, I'm trying to get back into the field that I was in before. Like, is that an appropriate place to mention that? Um, or should it be on the resume somehow? No. You know what? I um, remember one thing, Carol. When you're applying for a job, 100 other people applied for that same job. And what's going to make you different from the 100 people that applied for that job? Because I bet you 30 of them left the workforce to go child care. I'm, I'm just I'm making up numbers here, but I'm saying a certain percentage have gone out to child care. What makes you different? And a lot of times in the job market, they'll tell you and they'll explain express very clearly they do not want to be contacted well you know what then maybe that's not the job for you is that you go to uh, apply on a job in the area you you want to stay in the area right right okay go visit them hi my name is carol bring the hr person a coffee get them a donut do whatever do something different than what everybody else is going to do because they're going to have a, sp- uh, a a pile they're going to have a hundred resumes in a pack and they're going to spend an hour or two hours just going through and saying, okay, that's the good pile, this is the, the pile that we're going to interview, and this is the pile, the maybe pile. And then you have no idea which pile you're going to be in, and you're competing against, let's say, 100 people, uh, probably more so in some other jobs. What's going to make you different? And what's going to make, like, the, the resume paper, it's all white. Some people have frilly paper. Some people go out. It's just, you understand it's a professional Workplace, they expect professionalism. So, but you also got to pr- get noticed more so than the next person. Can I add, Frank, in in this, in terms of um, under what premise do you go and visit a company? Does cold calling just going to a company work, or do you call up and say, "My name is Carol. Um, I, I know you're not maybe not be hiring right now, but would it be all right if I come by and drop off my resume?" And so, just to present myself, that if you are looking in the future. Uh, I would be available for a job. What is the premise that you go? Because it, it, it's not natural, I guess, or maybe I'm just uncomfortable doing cold calling of any time. I mean, I go on a rant about the do not knock list on my house. I'm like, you know what? The, and at a company, I imagine they get people coming in all the time to see the receptionist. I'm just here to drop off my resume. How do you get the HR person to come down and see you? Okay, there's several ways to market yourself. I I I, I believe cold calling is you know uh, difficult at times for most people. It shows a, it shows initiative though, right? And it depends on what job you're going for. Right. You're applying for a sales job, you better be good at cold, cold calling. Yeah, exactly. Okay. The um, I, I would think that um, if you've applied for a job and you were uh, not um, not picked, the job has been selected, the person's been selected. Here's your opportunity to go to the HR person and say, listen. I think that I had a pretty good resume. What can I do? What types of courses? What type of stuff can I do to get this job the next time? There's your in for that person. Now, also, it's a a who you know type of business. Okay. So, uh, you know, the uh, the HR person is the uh, has a hockey team and he's the uh, coach of the hockey team. I I know this is actually an actual experience, but I'm going to kind of change it a little bit because I 
might have to protect people. In this okay, case. fair enough. So uh, the uh, HR person is the uh, the hockey coach, and a player on the team uh, happens to be a friend of mine. Um, this didn't happen to me personally, but it's uh, it's a it's a pretty good story because what they did was they actually got uh, the hockey coach's son to let them know, and that's how the resume got to the HR person, and that was an interesting way of doing it. I don't think that it got them the job, but it was something different from what, at least it was a who-you-know type of situation. And it wasn't intrusive. You're not going to their house. You're not hiring a skywriter. You're not doing something you're like, well, that's initiative, but it's also borderline crazy. And you got the little kid to to do your dirty work. (laughs) (laughs) Carol, did you get any information that you think will be helpful today? Yes, I'm going to uh, work on my resume today. All right, and then um, uh, Frank, what's the, what's your email address if she wants to send you? Uh, you have a paper copy, but if she wants to send you an updated version, absolutely. Uh, you can send your resume to Frank mm-hmm. at chainemploymentservices dot com. dot com. Okay, and I'll Car- be more than happy to give you a hand with the resume and uh, send you some uh, some editing. Okay. Carol, thanks great. thanks for joining us today. I hope this starts you on the road to uh, more full time employment. Then. That's great. Thanks so much for your help. Thank you. Hold on. And uh, I just want to get... John, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yourself? I'm well. Can I put you on hold for one more segment, and we'll come sure. back and have your question right away? Sure. Yeah. All right. Hold on. Okay. So John has a question on interviewing tips for Frank, and I also have... Uh, I asked and I received... Uh, I'll spotlight the first company that is looking for someone for uh, a, a position. So we'll talk about... Uh, uh, company in Niagara looking for full time position, and I have another. I have an email question, so I got a phone question. Then I have an interesting email question on uh, resumes for Frank as well. When we come back, it's our job fair. Uh, this is six ten CKTB. Back with more with Frank DeLuca from Chain Employment Services next. Honey, the dog is trying to tell us something. Um, he's hungry? Woof. No, the roof. We need a new one. Woof. He's saying woof, not roof. Then why is he wearing the water wings? Is it time for a new roof? Call New Heights Roofing for a free estimate. And for the last roof you will ever need, learn how affordable metal roofing now is. Metal or asphalt, they'll beat any estimate by 5%. Guaranteed. NewHeightsRoofing.ca. Changing the roofing industry. 905-32-ROOFS. That's roofs with an S. 905-327-6637. Time now for Step Beyond. Travel writer Liz Fleming takes you in exciting new directions. That huge guy in the Speedo swimming next to you in the freshwater stream in Florida might look like a cow of the sea, but he isn't. Manatees are. And you can swim with them, too, in Crystal River, a short drive north of St. Petersburg. Adult manatees weigh more than a 1,000 kilograms, but they're gentle giants, mostly content to loll around in the water and munch on seagrass. That's what makes them ideal swimming companions. Sign up for a tour with Captain Bill Bird of Bird's Underwater Manatee Tours, and he'll take you out to see them. You'll pull on a wetsuit, snorkel, and mask, and hop into the water right beside the manatees. They aren't fed by the tour boats, but they're naturally sociable, so they'll stay and interact with you while you use your underwater camera to snap photos. I guarantee you'll find them much more appealing than that guy in the Speedo. Liz Fleming writes for the Toronto Star and is managing editor of naturallyinniagara.ca. When the news breaks, at which point the vehicle attempted to make a left-hand turn, the CKTB news team springs into action. Adrenaline was running. In-depth coverage of the news that matters to Niagara. This, this is Niagara's News Talk 610 CKTB. Here's a look at your weather forecast. Back to some seasonal conditions today. Mainly sunny and a high of 14 degrees. A few clouds tonight, low down to 4. Mainly sunny on Tuesday, high of 15 degrees. Rain on Wednesday, high of just 8, though. Right now in downtown St. Catharines, under mostly sunny skies, we're now up to 10 degrees. Larry Fedorik knows a lot about everything. And he'll tell you all about it. The thing about having a website is it's like having a show all the time. It's great. I love it. So 610CKTB.com is where you can find me when I'm not on the air, you know. And uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter. And uh, join me on one of those right now. Larry Fedorik. Weekday afternoons from 2 to 6. Only on the one voice for Niagara. News Talk 610CKTB. 
RBC Visa Infinite Avion invites you to celebrate Canadian excellence with Canada's Walk of Fame. Help select the 2013 Canada's Walk of Fame inductees, and you could win a trip to attend the 15th anniversary VIP events this September. Enjoy a spectacular weekend in Toronto, walk the red carpet, attend the award show and party with the stars, courtesy of RBC Visa Infinite Avion. Go to Canada's Walk of Fame dot com today through April 30th to nominate an inspiring and remarkable Canadian. You can be here with the stars. Where does depression hurt? Everywhere. Who does depression hurt? Everyone. You know you can feel it emotionally, but did you know you can also feel it physically? There are treatments that work on both the emotional and unpleasant physical symptoms of depression. Visit depressionhurts.ca to learn more about these symptoms, then talk to your doctor. Depression hurts, but you don't have to. Listening to Tom McConnell on News Talk 610 CKTV and online at 610CKTV.com. Call Tom McConnell now at 905 688 CKTV. Oh, he's done. He's good. He, no, I didn't mean to be done that early. John in St. Catharines, how are you? You, you have a question Hi, for uh, Frank? Yeah, Tom. How are you doing, Frank? I'm well. Good. Um, I'm calling you because I had an interview uh, a few weeks ago. It was for the school board, as I'm a graduate of the um, educational assistant program at the college. Hello? Yes. Okay, and um, needless to say, I didn't get the job, and the reason was because my answers were not strong enough. Um, I have a raving reference letters. I'm just wondering, how do I um, improve that? Okay, so the only thing you think you did wrong was your answers weren't strong enough. That's what they said. It, it was a panel of five people who who were there to interview me. Okay, now, in being extremely critical of yourself, what do you think could have been anything else? Well, I think what may have happened was I applied for another job for the school board, and I went in with the mindset that it was for this other job, not for the EA uh, job. But with that, I just... I th- I have the skills. I have a good... Uh, resume i think and the the references okay you just said a couple of things i just want to go over each one okay. um so ideally you may have not been properly prepared for this interview okay okay because it says that you were thinking about another one yeah because it was they were both for the school board and i went in with the mindset that it was for another job so, so i wasn't really prepared but i just walked in anyways, uh, thinking that uh, I could um, get by with the resume and the um, the references. And basically, my parents, you know, my I felt that my body language was very strong. Okay, because because uh, an EA's position, uh, some expectations are to be prepared. Yes. So So again, that's maybe one okay. other aspect. So Great. one of my suggestions would have been make sure you're prepared. Yeah. Uh, with an EA job or a teacher's position. You, you are there to prepare uh, daily plans for the day. Um, to be, You have to be organized. So all those things have to be in place, and that's probably maybe one thing that they decided that weren't prepared. A lot of times in interviews, they don't tell you exactly why you didn't get it because there's, there's just so many different uh, variables. They have so many people coming through. Right. They probably didn't write it down. Like, you know, they don't uh, analyze everybody who interviews. Mm-hmm. Could it also be a point that, well, even if you had a great interview... There was someone who could have an exceptional interview. That you could have had the greatest interview and thought, "Boy, I nailed it." But they're looking for just one person. They're not looking for everyone who meets a qualifying standard. That right. there could be just someone else, just who had a perfect interview, for lack of a better term. And that's that must be difficult though, because if you have you know high expectations and you think you're you're the right person, there are plenty of other, if there are plenty of other people who are applying for that job. Okay, now you 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 said you were working for a school board. In the area? Yes, I did two uh, school placements, one for the Catholic and one for the other school board. Okay, so uh, you said, I think my resume is good. Well, I find you that... You know, I'm not, I'm not, I, what I'm saying is that you said, I think. Yeah, because I Do you that... have friends that are in the uh, in the school board right now? 
have I got friends? Yeah, like uh, um, some another teacher that's already I do, there. Yes. Okay. Yes. What I would do, one of the first things I would do is give them your resume and tell them what they think. Okay. Just let them and tell them to be extremely critical of your resume. You I want, find you, that no matter where I go, it's never the same. That's um, that's okay. You take different opinions. Okay. And you put them all together, and you get five opinions. Four opinions say that uh, you need to do this with your resume, then you do it. Majority rules when it comes to that type right, of stuff. Right, okay. Um, now, in regards to dress, how did you dress for the interview? I, with, I wore a pair of uh, khaki pants with a matching uh, beige sweater. Well, uh, at least it wasn't jeans. Yes. Okay. Like Frank has said, no jeans. Even if you're going for a job at Levi's, do not wear jeans. So For, it, for a teacher interview, I wouldn't have worn khaki jeans no. or khaki pants. Really? You would have gone? I would have worn dress pants and a dress shirt. Okay. Okay. And then, you know what? And, and, and that may not be the reason, but the understand is that's probably what you're going to be wearing for the most of the time would be a dress shirt and dress pants as a teacher. I right. know that they, you know, they dress a little bit more casual these days. They do. Not from my days when I went to school. Yeah, but going right. to an interview, you've always said dress above okay. the job you're applying for. Right. And, and dress like you're meeting your, your potential parents, uh, your Hello. girlfriend's parents for the first time. <laughs> okay. Oh, how about a tie? Uh, tie's optional. Uh, in that type of job, a tie wouldn't hurt you. Okay. But it wouldn't, you don't need the, the silk tie with the... Uh, uh, with all the the matching crazy, handkerchiefs, yes, and the right, crazy, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, paisley flowers on. I would, you know, just a regular tie and a dress shirt, and I think that that would be the a, a tie would be fine. And if you didn't wear a tie, that's another, you know, depending on who's on the panel, depending on how young they are, mm -hmm. depending on how old they are, they might look at that as you know, not a strike, but something to consider. Because ideally, when you're going to go to work there, I mean, the expectation is. I don't think that they wear ties anymore. I don't see very many uh, teachers with ties anymore. But you need to dress a little bit better than what the the job is. Okay. Now, did you do anything different in the interview? Um, different. Um, like it's just a regular interview, no surprises. You didn't perform a juggling act in the middle right. or anything. No, no. I just you know I I walked in. I I didn't sit down as you know they say don't sit down until you ask to sit down. Very good. I shook everyone's hand. Um, did you keep continue eye, ta uh, eye contact with everybody when you no, answered? No, because uh, I because of my lack of uh, preparation. That's okay. Well, it's, okay, so you you weren't prepared. Right. There's there's EA jobs are are, are a dime a dozen because there's lots of them. Uh, yes. You know, at certain periods of time, um, what you need to do is if you if you're if you're really intent on working for the school board, there are four school bo school boards in the area. There's so there's four? not yeah. There's the French Catholic, okay. the French. Uh, public, public. Thank you, and the Catholic board and the district school board. Then there is the private schools. There's okay. uh, several different private schools in the area. Uh, Gray Gables. So you know, I mean, maybe uh, what's well, the, you dated yourself on yeah, that. That's, that's no longer yeah, around. What's the other one? Uh, <laughs> Wheatley Wheat, College. Wheat, Wheatley. 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 That's what I was thinking. Okay. Of. okay. <laughs> thank you, John. We got to leave it there. But okay. thanks for your question. What question? Um, the resume. Is it in the past or the present? My job skills. Uh, you you need to the whole resume needs to be in either one or the other. Okay. If you're gonna if you're going to put the past tense in your resume, because it's a, because it's a, go ahead. I'll put you, um, that should be a consi consistent consistent throughout the whole because okay. uh, ideally, as an educational assistant, you want to make sure all your grammar is correct. You yeah. want to make sure that spell check goes through every the way. Um, one of the things you can do is, is in practicing for your future is that you practice with uh, a friend who makes you laugh. Okay. And yeah. you, what you try to do is not to laugh during an interview. Right. You have yeah. to make it a serious interview. Yes. Tape yourself, look at yourself, to, uh, you know, use a videotape, uh, whatever, and look at yourself and be extremely critical of all your body movements and body languages. And then when you get to the interview, how? what time did you get to the interview at? Uh, half an hour before. Beautiful. I was just going to say that at least 15 minutes before that interview, and uh, make sure that you're prepared at that time, right. even 15 minutes be uh, or half hour before, you're prepared to go to the interview right away. Okay. John, thanks, thanks. for the call.